So one thing we know about the 21st century is that the 21st century is shaping up to be very little like the 20th. And that's true of the world of media as well. Our media culture today is radically different in many ways than uh, our media culture was even 10 years ago. It goes beyond just entertainment or distraction. I think we're coming up against limits in almost every important aspect of, of things that affect our lives, like the way we use energy and our food system and water and the environment. We can safely say that there are two trends at work in our 21st century media culture. The first is what I like to call the C trend, which is the trend towards centralization. Google's trying to take over the world, albeit imperfectly. Facebook is trying to take over the world of social media. We have traditional uh, media corporations, giants in the media landscape like Time Warner, for example, or uh, Rupert Murdoch's News Corp, who are duking it out with cable companies for the future of of our media landscape. That's the C, that's the C trend, that's the trend towards centralization. And then the second trend is this D trend, which is the trend towards decentralization, towards democracy, towards um, engaging people in the civic realm. And that's what we do um, here at Burlington College. We really focus with the Media Activism Program on uh, training students not just to be media producers uh, for corporate commercial reasons, but really training students to be media producers and understand our media landscape so that they can be thoughtful and engaged citizens in the communities uh, in which they live. People that do media activism are going to be instrumental in doing the hard work that a lot of institutions aren't going to be able to do. I think people have become increasingly more dependent on the media sphere as other institutions become less relevant. The amount of time people spend immersed in media in the next century, in the 21st century, is, is going to rival the amount of time that people have spent in school and at work and being productive in other ways. Um, and so I think it's this, this sort of atmospheric background that really affects the way people think, the way people act, the way people work, the way people organize. And being able to get a handle on that, I think, will, will be instrumental in reforming most of the institutions of public life. Like it or not, media, it defines the way we understand and perceive the world. What I'm really interested in is repositioning journalism as a public service rather than as a media product. Because once you have a media product, you're beholden to all the things that any product is. People buying what they want rather than what they need. People buying something because it's popular or sensationalistic. Whereas if journalism can be repositioned as a public service, a public good, something that needs to be put out there for the community so people can make informed decisions about their lives, that's where my real passion lies. And that set of skills is invaluable. It's the kind of set of, it's, it's a set of skills that will translate across any, any job, any discipline, uh, even as we don't really know where future of our media landscape and the future of, of the world really is taking us in the next uh, couple of decades. It's never like that. It's what are you passionate about? What do you want to share your voice about? Okay, here's a microphone. Let's do it. So it's an exciting time to be doing media activism. Uh, we're heading into the unknown and our job is to prepare our students here um, to be as ready as they possibly can be, uh, to think on their feet, to be adaptable, and to be uh, engaged in that world as it emerges.